Hello again everyone, I'm Jamie and welcome back to Trick Bricks. I'm glad you could join me for today's installment in the Adventures Retrospective series, where we're going to be taking a look at set number 5978, The Sphinx Secret Surprise. It was released in 1998, contains 347 pieces, and includes 7 minifigures. It's also one of my personal favorites, so without further ado, let's jump right in. Without a doubt, one of my favorite sets in the entire Adventurers series. This was an eBay pickup, and I really got lucky with it. It's one of the cleanest, most mint condition vintage sets I've ever seen. Anyway, there's tons of stuff to look at here, so let's dive right in. First thing we have is this car, which is pretty middle of the road, or desert in this case, when compared to the other vehicles we've seen so far. It uses a similar cargo setup as the Scorpion Tracker, making perfect use of this 3x4 crate, but there is one difference, this empty space right here, which is designed to carry digging tools like this shovel and pickaxe. Other cargo items include this display container, intended for housing small, precious antiquities, and a skillet. There's also a clip on the passenger side door for holding a movie camera, and it comes complete with the same printed tile we've seen included many times of Johnny and Dr. Lightning at the entrance of a tomb. You do have something new here though in this printed license plate tile. I don't think the number is meant to be significant to us and if I had to guess it's probably just the designer's initials and birth date. The one piece body element is again utilized and it has plenty of room for Johnny Thunder and a passenger who in this case is Miss Gail Storm. This is our first encounter with Miss Storm, and she's the least common minifigure in this series by far, only being included in two sets, and the two most expensive sets at that. She comes with a white pith helmet, has a very nice face and hair print, and wears a khaki shirt and red pants. The print on the shirt is pretty detailed, featuring a red bandana, a compass, and since she is, after all, a journalist, a pen in her shirt pocket. If we spin her around, we'll see that there's no alternate expression or rear torso printing, and the same goes for all the other minifigures included in this set. And Johnny, well, is Johnny. I've gone into great detail in previous episodes about how and why he's an all-time classic figure in my book, so I won't bore you by repeating myself here, but he is an all-time classic. Now let's move on to this awesome campsite. We're going to see a few items today that are exclusive to this set, and the first one happens to be this very cool tent. It's cloth, unlike the flexible plastic ones found today, and it has opening flaps to access the fairly spacious interior. The fabric is still pretty stiff though, more so than say a pirate ship sail, and it's all held up by this plate frame. There's also a simple little campfire build to go along with it, complete with a cooking pot and a coffee mug. They also approximate some grub with the inclusion of a one by one round plate. According to the instructions, this is our villain's campsite, and we get both of them in this set. Sam Sinister, the dastardly mastermind, and Baron Von Baron, Sam's right-handed right-hand man. Next up, we have this ominous black sarcophagus, complete with skeleton tenant. He clutches a yellow chalice and is sporting a white headdress, which is another element exclusive to this set. Next, we have Dr. Lightning, and he's given several accessories, including a hatchet and his trusty magnifying glass. He also wears his backpack, which is able to be open for storing small items, such as this printed dynamite tile and he has to have a place to do his field research, so they've included this neat little makeshift desk for him to work at. It's pretty simple, again making excellent use of the crate element, and it has this cool build for a microscope, using a sextant and magnifying glass. And he'll have plenty of stuff to pour over because the Sphinx Secret Surprise comes with a few maps. In fact, it comes with every Egyptian map LEGO created for this series, and this was the only set that offered all four in one place. At some point, I'd like to do an entire video dedicated to the time and attention that LEGO put into these and how each map corresponds to a particular set in the theme, but we'll save that for another day. Anyway, back to the here and now. 
One of the defining features of the Sphinx Secret Surprise is this raised base plate, yet another piece that is unique to this set, at least in this color scheme. On the right, you've got a ramp leading up to this structure, as well as two sets of stairs. The steps at the rear take us up to this tall obelisk, and it sort of works like the one we saw in our last episode, The Mummy's Tomb, being able to topple over onto unsuspecting trespassers. However, this one actually hides a surprise. Once it comes crashing down, a hidden compartment is revealed containing several gold coins. On the opposite side of the base plate, we'll find a jointed palm tree, an old favorite of mine. And in front of that is a nice little brick-built statue of Anubis. For some reason, I enjoy building small statues, and this was no exception. And here's a little scorpion to keep him company. Front and center, we're going to find a few light gray plates that look pretty inconspicuous at first glance, but they're actually covering up a dig site. I think this brick is meant to represent a pile of sand, and it allows us to grab hold and lift the plates to reveal this pit below, which houses a red snake, a few more gold coins, and one of the treasure maps. There's plenty of room left over if you'd like to add more for our heroes to discover. Of course, the most distinct feature of this set is the Sphinx, and it looks great. Sure, nowadays something like this would probably make more use of curved slopes and rounded tiles to better achieve a more realistic shape, but this was the 90s, and it worked perfectly at the time. The top features the face and headdress, and I actually like how the designers decided to add a bit of color instead of going with a more authentic monochrome build. They also made great use of this modified plate to represent a necklace. Beneath that, we have a red ruby and a printed tile with the pharaoh's curse. At first glance, it doesn't seem very accurate to have the Ray Gal ruby just hanging out where everyone and his brother can walk up and grab it, but that's because this is a decoy ruby, intended to lure would-be grave robbers into a trap. If we take a look at the right of the Sphinx, we'll see this plate protruding out from the side. It's the trigger to the trap and sliding it quickly toward the rear causes Pharaoh Hotep to crash through the chest on his throne, pulverizing whoever was attempting to steal his treasure. The mechanism used to accomplish this is a simple one, but the play feature itself is a lot of fun to mess around with. Like Johnny Thunder, Pharaoh Hotep is a must-have for any classic minifigure collection. His printing details are excellent, and he stands apart from the crowd with that mischievous red-eyed expression. When all is said and done, you have an absolute classic in this set. Between the seven minifigures, vehicle, tons of accessories, and lots of ruins to explore, this is like a ready-made adventure, full of almost limitless possibilities. If you'd like to add the Sphinx Secret Surprise to your collection, a used set will run you somewhere around $70, and sealed ones are usually about double that. Either way, it gets a definite recommend from me, and you won't be disappointed. But that's all I have for you today. If you like this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up and be sure to click that subscribe button so you don't miss the conclusion to season one of the Adventures Retrospective series, episode 11, The Pharaoh's Forbidden Ruins, which should make for a truly grand finale. Until then, this has been Jamie for Trick Bricks. Take care everybody and play well.